Good afternoon. This is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading report for February 17th, 2018. Market is in bullish volatile conditions on an annual basis using weekly RSI 14. We're above the halfway point in neutral at 59 out of 100. We've returned to overbought conditions in the NDX 10 at 88. In the market mosaic, Price with respect to the 200-day moving average has improved to white bullish at 7.26%. Five-day slip of the 50 has improved to yellow neutral at 0.26. ADX remains strongly trending 43.0. That's a deceiving indicator there because of the extreme volatility. Uh, The ADX remains at a high level, but the Leadership has moved back from the bears to the bulls, and so this should not be considered a strong trend. Uh, That's just an anomaly in in the math behind that indicator. The risk index is the 30-period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. The boundary between risk on and off is 1.0. Current reading is still an extremely low 0.687, so we're deeply into risk off. You compare that number to the last 5,000 trading days, we get a risk Z score of minus 3.59, meaning that we're three and a half standard deviations below the long term average. This is a 90 day histogram of that indicator. You can see how the uh, shock selling event has uh, really distorted um, that indicator, moved it to extremes. Uh, on of note for the bulls, this is uh, crested at minus four and now started to roll back up. And so conventionally, we would say that that is an indication that you can start swing trade positions. I would do that under heavy advisement. We're not out of the woods yet. Uh, although I do like the fact that it has bottomed out and that there's been uh, five days of steady buying pressure in the market to offset the sell off. So we will continue to play swing trades. Um, among our best candidates uh, to the long side, although we will be prepared for uh, taking the short side position on intraday volatility spikes uh, in order to offset the risk to those long side positions. So we're ready to become market neutral at a moment's notice. In blended monthly rebalancing, uh, next evaluation is due on or about 1 March. This is what we're been holding for February, and these are the winners in these uh, portfolios on the basis of Friday's closing prices. ETF2 theoretical exposure is still at 10% as a function of all the indices dropping below their four-month moving average. Improvements in both the 13 and the 32 ETF portfolio, uh, much fewer now on cash signals. Leading candidates were the leading candidates going into the uh, into the start of the month: Latin America, technology, emerging markets, and the Dow. Um, Australia, Asia, less Japan, Treasuries, and real estate still on cash. Similar results in ETF thirty two. Um, strength in Brazil and Latin America. These are the three uh, ETF sectors or the spider sectors that I'm looking at, uh, consumer discretionary, financials, and industrials. Uh, Good performance in the emerging markets and China this week, along with Brazil. So they remain on the radar screen. Um, In the Dow 30, Boeing, Cisco, Caterpillar up top. Uh, Cisco had an exceptionally good week. Uh, along with Walmart, Goldman, uh, and Apple. Weakness down here, Johnson & Johnson, McDonald's, Coke, Procter & Gamble. Uh, Sell-offs in McDonald's and Chevron, uh, making interest in them as potential value plays downstream. Note those as deep value plays. Uh, Among the sector spiders, 
uh, outperformance, metals and mining, aerospace, software. So I'll be looking at metals and mining because that leads me to uh, things like Caterpillar um, and Alcoa. In ETF Max, uh, some leading candidates here, South Africa, metals and mining and coal, all had ex excellent uh, one-week performances, along with uh, a, a rebound somewhat in the energy sector with oil, uh, more metals and mining, timber and forestry. And aerospace, that leads us back to, to Boeing as well. In the uh, market health check, the vertical blue lines, 10, 20, 30 days worth of look back, 40, 50, and 60. The horizontal red lines are support levels, um, which act as price targets on the way down uh, if this rolls over once more. The purple lines are price targets on the way up that used to be support and are now resistance. Um, note the, uh, the slope of the river has now flattened out. The dragon has moved from the far side of the river where it was almost pulling that up. Uh, came all the way down to the bottom side of the river. It has started to roll over and up. The baby dragon has rolled up. That's favorable. The 10 period slope, 10 period uh, regression line slope is up, although you can see the width of the regression channel. The slope of the 30 channel is down. But really that's six days of buying pressure after what's looking like a bottoming tail. You can just barely see the 200 period moving average back on the chart. Uh, percent price oscillator has hooked up. We have the, um, the crossover in the MACD histogram outside of the river. And that's a time that says we can start uh, stalking. Um, the MACD is above the zero line. The, uh, the signal line has a few more days to go before it crosses. When we would shift our bias to the long side. So I'm tentatively on the long side here. This is aggressive early stalking. You see we pulled back from being 12% down to just about 5% down from the previous swing high. You can see how the slope of the 30 period regression line has bottomed out and is getting ready to hook back up. So this is taking on the qualities of an owl pattern right here. Uh, in regional index, only Latin America is above the filter, and only consumer discretionary is ab above the four-month moving average here. But strength in financials, industrials, and discretionary. U.S. generally above average across the board. Japan and China above average. Malaysia, Latin America, Brazil all exceptionally strong. Metals and mining, South Africa, oil leading the way. Emerging strength in biotech, Brazil, Latin America, um, and Malaysia. Shifting to the daily report. No signals in channeling and overreaction. We've gone from oversold back to overbought, sort of a validation of the channeling and overreaction systems once more. In the 10-day max pain, uh, Exxon Mobil, McDonald's, Chevron, Verizon, and Traveler. The Travelers had been an excellent performer prior to the sell-off, so I'm going to add them to my new pattern of signals on the basis of max pain and Verizon as well. So these are all symbols that I'm going to frame out for the swing course. Uh, McDonald's on the auto framer. That makes that one very interesting. Um, ExxonMobil, I need to add to the list here. On the auto framer. And all of these that are auto framed out while we're going to be on my list for framing. 
in the ETF 30 VIX, energy and treasuries in the ad energy bucket. Just looking to see what the sector is doing. I'm interested in Chevron and Exxon Mobil, so I need to also look at the sector they're a part of. So that gets added to my uh, new patterns of signals. In a daily pension stretch report, uh, Cisco um, has been really leading the way. So we're going to look at some more continuation on Cisco. In the U.S. sectors, price relative to the middle of the river, uh, the small caps are leading the way on a Z-score basis. And so I take that to be aggressive traders uh, buying that on sale. Uh, with, that's not surprising as a tactical posture. The most negative Z stretches, these are the ones that are the most below their 30-period uh, moving average in the middle of the river. Uh, I notice uh, Home Depot, one of our favorites, is in there. So that's certainly going to get drained. Johnson & Johnson, we're going to take that one on a, on a Z stretch. And Devon Energy, of course, always one of our, one of our favorites. The most expanded pinch boxes, these are the ones that have the uh, widest river. So it's not surprising to see. Look at the energy um, sector in here because of its previous strong trend. Exxon, Mobil, Chevron, Energy, Devon. Uh, so energy is still hopping. These are the uh, most compressed pinch boxes, the ones that look most like um, Z3 pinches, gold. Very close to a Z3, uh, a super pinch, I should say. Silver, oil, Brazil. I like the fact that Brazil is um, tightly compressed. That means there's room for that to go. No squeezes. I should come back to the uh, regression line. Fractals, the green symbols, the most numbers of ATR below their own RL270, so these often become... Uh, deep discounted value plays, so Procter & Gamble uh, should be on my list for as an RLFF candidate. It's uh, four ATRs below its fair value, so that's an attractive level. And then these in the red are the most numbers of ATR above their own RL270. And this used to be up around 7, 8, and 9, but that sell-off has really uh, harshed that. Uh, but these are the relative strength leaders uh, who may be resuming their moves. So Cisco and Nike are of interest. Boeing is already on my list. So let's add Nike to this. Price starting to heal. The slope of the 30 has bottomed out to the 6 o'clock position, getting ready to roll up. And uh, more than a 2 sigma rebound on the percent stretch. This excursion below the long-term average is one of the you know top 10 or I should say bottom 10 excursions uh, but you can see it's just starting to turn now. Uh, volatility by either measure still extremely large so that's a that's a cautionary tale. Incredible rebound in the 10 period a from a plus two to almost a minus six sigma. That's an eight sigma move. And then from minus six to plus one and a half, another eight sigma move the other direction. That's what that looks like. A heart attack. Here's a 50% retracement, almost to the ball, short of the Bollinger Band mean. And that's everything we want to look at. I'll show these stats just for those of you using this for intraday turbo. So some these five-day moves have been nice. And uh, you can see the strength in Latin America hit withstood the sell-off better than most. bottom members of the ETF2, there may be some um, value plays to be had down in this area as well. 
think that's the weekend report. Now I've got some work to do to prepare my trade frames for the week ahead and some portfolio management uh, updating those open positions now for the advanced swing trade. This is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.